we continue our lecture with taxonomy. Uh, let's talk about how we create names for viruses. At first, uh, viruses were named according to their host range or the organ system they affected. However, by 1960s, virologists realized that some viruses can affect more than a single organ system or host. So, in 1966, at the International Congress of Microbiology in Moscow, a new system was proposed. According to this new system, each name has three levels. First level is family name. Family names all end in virida. Second level, genus names. Genus names end in virus. And finally, last layer, species name. Species names are English words. Let's look at this example on the bottom of this slide. For example, her family name is Retro Virida. Genus name of this virus is Lenti virus or Lenti virus. And finally, species name is Human Immunodeficiency Virus or HIV virus. Very often, family names converted into English. For example, retro viridae are called retro viruses. So, uh, how do we grow viruses in our labs? Uh, today, we're going to focus on uh, mostly animal viruses uh, because animal viruses are very similar to human viruses. So, anyway, for a long time, research of animal viruses was behind research of bacteriophages. Remember, bacteriophages are viruses that use bacteria as a host cell. So, why research of animals, animal viruses was behind research of uh, bacteriophages? Because back then, animal viruses had to be cultivated only by affecting animals. And the process was time-consuming and expensive. But uh, in 1930s, uh, virologists discovered that some animal viruses could be grown in embryonated chicken eggs. To grow viruses, uh, eggs are inoculated with viruses. After virus has multiplied, a virus containing fluids can be researched. That was a great discovery. But in 1950s, even more important discovery was made. Scientists discovered primary cell cultures. Primary cell cultures are started from normal tissues taken directly from humans or other animals. Means scientists simply discovered that they can grow our own tissues on the petri dishes and then use them as a host cells for different viruses. There's, uh, there was only one disadvantage of this method. Primary cell cultures could support only about 20 or so subcultures and then after that they die and uh, lose their ability to support viral replication. And uh, finally, uh, continuous cell lines were discovered and uh, continuous cell lines are derived from uh, cancerous tissue. Uh, you probably remember from anatomy class or biology class that uh, can cancerous tissue never stop dividing. So that means they will support uh, viral replication forever. The most uh, 
famous uh, continuous uh, cell line today is Helen Lake uh, cervical cancer tissue. Uh, that tissue was uh, obtained from uh, this patient in 19. 51 and till today we're still using uh, this cancerous tissue in our labs. So let's summarize. How can we grow viruses today in the lab? We can use embryonated chicken eggs. We can use primary cell cultures and finally we can use continuous cell lines. Next, we're going to talk about uh, replication of animal viruses uh, because, as I said, animal viruses are very similar to human viruses. So, uh, uh, there are six stages in replication of animal viruses. The first stage is called adsorption. Adsorption means attachment. And then the next stage is called penetration. Penetration. Next one is uncoating, uncoating, and then viral synthesis. The next one is maturation, and uh, finally release. So next we're going to go through each stage and uh, talk about them in greater details. Adsorption means attachment. So uh, let's talk about how viruses choose their host cells. In order for the virus to use cell as a host cell, virus has to be able to recognize surface receptors on the top of that cell. Keep in mind, all cells, including human cells, have surface receptors on the surface. So if a virus is able to recognize a surface receptor on the cell, then that virus attaches to the surface of that cell and uses it as a host. What structures do viruses use to recognize surface receptors on cells? To recognize surface receptors on cells, viruses use what we call binding proteins. If a virus is enveloped and has uh, spikes on the top of the envelope, then binding proteins will be located on the top of those spikes. If virus is naked, has no envelope, then binding proteins will be located on the surface of capsid. The next replication stage is penetration. After virus attached to the surface of the host cell, it has to insert its nucleic acid into cytoplasm of the host cell. Enveloped viruses have two pathways or two ways to get their nucleic acid into cytoplasm of the host cell. The first pathway or way is called the uh, fusion at the cell membrane. And those pictures on the top of this slide shows, show, shows you uh, uh, fusion at the cell membrane. So this is some kind of cell membrane of the host cell. This is our enveloped virus. As it goes across the cell membrane, the capsid and the envelope stays on the surface of the cell membrane and only nucleic acid will be inserted into host cell cytoplasm. The second pathway is called fusion in phagocytosis. And next few pictures show you fusion in phagocytosis. Again, this is our enveloped virus. This is the cell membrane of the host cell. You see in this case the entire virus will be engulfed by the host cell. And finally, naked viruses. Uh, the way that uh, naked viruses use to insert their uh, nucleic acid into cytoplasm of the host cell is very similar to fusion at the cell membrane of enveloped viruses. 
So basically, again, uh, this is our naked virus. This is a capsid. There is nucleic acid inside. Uh, this is a plasma membrane or cell membrane of the uh, host cell. So as you see, as the naked virus goes across the uh, cell membrane, of the host cell, it leaves capsid on the surface of the cell membrane and only nucleic acid will be inserted into cytoplasm. The next stage of replication cycle is uncoating and uh, uncoating means removal of capsid and uh, envelope. Let's go to the previous slide for one second. What you have to remember is uncoating stage is only applying to this type of enveloped viruses because in this case the entire virus was engulfed by the host cell so it re it requires that additional stage of uncoating to remove capsid and envelope. This type of enveloped viruses are already uncoated. Same as in naked viruses, they are uncoated. So how do viruses uncoat themselves? Very simple. They just use certain enzymes from the cytoplasm of the host cell and those enzymes remove envelope and capsid from those viruses. As soon as a um, virus is uncoated, then it goes through viral synthesis. So what viruses do on this stage, they uh, insert or incorporate their nucleic acid in the host cell chromosome. As soon as it happens, the host cell turns into what we call provirus, or sometimes we call it viral factory. Why? Because from this moment, that host cell starts making parts of the virus. And then uh, viruses go through maturation when parts of the virus uh, get assembled into mature virus. And final stage of replication is release. Uh, enveloped uh, and naked viruses leave their host cells in different way. Let's start with naked or non-enveloped viruses. When non-enveloped or naked viruses are completely mature and uh, ready to leave their host cell, they just simply destroy it and this way they get released. That's why we call non-enveloped or naked viruses mean viruses because they kill their host cell when they get released. Enveloped viruses on another, on another side do not destroy do not destroy their host cell. When they're mature enough to leave their host cell, they simply go through the plasma membrane. Again, they go across the plasma membrane. As they go across the plasma membrane, they grab just piece of plasma membrane and make an envelope for themselves out of that piece of plasma membrane and the host cell will continue making viruses. <laughs>